Okay, good evening, everybody. This is the Wednesday, January 8th, 6 p.m. workshop or regarding the public safety building and a status update on the construction of the public safety. Before we begin, just some quick background on why we're here. Uh, it's been known for quite some time that the budget, excuse me, the public safety building was approximately $400,000 over budget for, I would say, for the last year and a half. Um, since then, there's been a slight increase in that number. Uh, and we've also found ourselves, so we found ourselves in the position where we are going over the predicted expenditures. Uh, we've been at, we've had some things working to our advantage in the bond market as well. Uh, however, the point of this workshop is just for the council to, and, and more importantly, the public to thoroughly understand where we are, uh, to put some more specific numbers to some of the figures we've been batting around. I think as if you're watching at home or in person, sometimes more behind the desk, it's hard to follow. So the purpose of this solely is just to educate all of us, get everybody feeling um, like we're talking about the same set of facts and we have a thorough understanding of where the project is. Uh, so with that, I think I'll turn it over to the town manager, Mr. Hall. Yeah, we have Tom Perkins, uh, owner's representative here again tonight. And I think uh, I'm going to ask Tom to kind of walk us through the, the slides tonight. Um, I'll certainly collaborate as needed. So um, this uh, slide deck was really put together in response to a number of the questions that councillors have raised. And so our intent was to be responsive to those questions. Um, we're certainly prepared to go beyond that if there are questions that come up contemporaneously tonight. So. Um, you want to go ahead, Tom? Sure, thanks. I uh, appreciate, again, your time tonight, consideration, and uh, <clears throat> feel free to, to uh, interrupt and ask questions. I, I definitely want to make sure you have all the information you need to, to make uh, informed decisions. Uh, our first slide is sort of in response to, uh, you know, what are the sort of the attributes of our, of our, of our new building? Uh, again, this programming was developed over the course of uh, a couple of years with the ad hoc committee and uh, uh, refined and back and refined again um, but the final footprint of the building or, or uh, total square footage of the building rather is, is a little over 54,000 square feet uh, it is planned as it stands right now for a 25 year space planning program uh, so the personnel needs for the public safety department over the next 25 years the building itself is a 40 year design life uh, but important note in that is there's structural uh, preps made in the building as it stands out there today to accommodate expansion at that 25 plus year uh, should it be needed at that time. So um, that was part of the planning and it's part of what's in there so that um, uh, that space is ready to go uh, if and when it's needed. Um, Probably, unless you'd like me to go through each item, uh, yes. I have a few questions on that. So yes. the 25-year space planning, what's that based on? So that's based on town growth <coughs> and how large you think the department's going to grow? It is. And then just um, in relation to that, there was some mention, I think, last time of that there is going to be a certain amount of the space unfinished. Is that offices? Is that, or just there, it's going to be finished space, but it's, you're not going to have, it's not going to have all the, the furnishings in it? What, what unfurnished is, is really Unfurnished, not yes. unfinished. Yep. Okay. Um, but it's an important point because when we came back here at the end of 2018 to sort of present where we were, that was absolutely one of the options Right, to so leave part of it unfinished, yes. I, okay. And then the data center. Um, so we know that we do have a lack of data center space. And I, you know, there seem to be a couple of different iterations throughout, like data center was moving, it's not moving. So where do we stand on the data center moving to that building to alleviate the space cramping in this building? The network operations center, the NOC in the new building, mm -hmm. uh, has a lot of space in it. Um, and it uh, includes some rack space for future growth. Uh, but the ID department uh, in reviewing it um, doesn't feel that it would be uh, cost effective to move the data center from here to there. Uh, so that uh, room and that, that uh, where the uh, E911 and all of that other very critical gear is going mm -hmm. to be housed uh, is, is going to just stay a, a data center or, net, or not a data center, but sort of a network node on the town network. Okay. Um, but there is space there to add racks, and that future planning has been made. 
Okay. There's, there's also space to accommodate uh, up to five cellular users. They'll have some equipment that they'll need to store inside. So that was yep. known up front and planned for accordingly. Okay. Um, and the real cost is all the fiber terminates in this building. And so the thought of rerouting, uh, bringing all those terminations over there was really where the cost that was, uh, where the was born. Cost was. Okay. And we found ourselves in a position of not being able to fund the building anyway. So that was just added cost. And so we focused on public safety only. Okay. So, but you probably probably do anticipate looking at that other capital plan that they will need more space at some point, I, the IT department. I, I would expect their needs will grow, although we're trying to put them out in the schools to the extent we can. And okay. so we, we always had staff deployed in all the schools as well. So okay. I think we'll do our best to find space uh, that exists. I, I don't expect coming forward with any capital plan to build new space for them okay. anytime awesome. soon. Okay, awesome. Thank you. <clears throat> so as, as you hopefully got a chance to take a look at this, I mean, uh, I think a lot of this, um, this is the programming that was on the display boards here, as I understand it, predates, predates me, but I've been advised, um, you know, that the, the voters were able to review and look at, um, and, um, you know, I, I think that uh, the programming has been pretty consistent, and what we've done through our value engineering efforts is trying to figure out a way to accomplish that programming um, uh, less expensively. We've had those discussions at, at length, but did anyone else have any questions about what the building is or the, the spaces that are in it? I have one more quick question. Of course. So the storage for the files, et cetera, is that just for police and fire? Or will that be some town storage as well for documents? Well, Just police and fire, I believe. Okay. Our, our plan is to go more and more electronic every day. Um, and it was an effort to really downsize as part of this move. I think the chiefs have made uh, good progress, but we'll still be carting over old file cabinets with paper files. Well, right, and state law doesn't always keep up with the, right. <laughs> what you want to do, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. So the important thing, it, it's kind of like a house, right? You move in and, oh, I never have enough closet space. So we've really, <laughs> uh, I think, done a nice job of dedicating uh, specific space in, uh, in appropriate areas for that storage, um, whether it be evidence or dead records or live active records or, or other incidental things. Um, so... That, and it's well distributed throughout the, and there's also two uh, mezzanine lofts um, that are able to be used as storage. Yes. What's the capacity for the community room? A uh, hundred people is what we're planning on for seats plus presenters. And that's dividable into two rooms. So you could have 250 person events going on there. Roughly the size of these two chambers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do you know what capacity or what percentage of utilization you'll have when you move in because the, the number that's striking for me and, and others you know this is you know long well past us in terms of any decision point but you know you're 54,000 square feet today you know the numbers I've heard are that's two times what we have today so when you move in does that mean you're going to be 50 percent utilized of the available space there uh, or what percentage would it be um, I would uh, be hesitant to throw out a number at you but I uh, I, it's definitely more than 50%, but again, we're, we're planning the space for the next 25 years plus. So um, that's why, in, and we'd, we'd certainly hope at any time we'd love to take you on a tour and you can see how the building is shaping up here as we're just a couple short months away now from, from really uh, putting the finishing touches on it. Um, you can see that the, the, the space for capacity and expansion is, is provided, and uh, it'll be there when the town needs it. But it's not overly excessive, and it fits uh, well for the programming on day one as it does on year 26. Right, Shall I move on? Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, I did one. I won. I'm sorry. Yeah, cool. So, so t Tom, I know there's like discussion at you know. Every time some of these things come up, there's always, like, discussion about how to combine uses. And so IT was one, and mm -hmm. that was analyzed. There's um, one thing I hear out in the community a lot that I'm just trying to get straight is, you know, oh, there's going to be room for seniors to meet there. Is that any kind of a plan, um, or is that something that, okay. Absolutely. Yeah, we call it the community room. It also serves a training purpose. Uh, if it's all hands on deck for, all, for training, you know, we'll need to accommodate close to 100 people, frankly. Uh, but 
that space is available uh, on off hours and, and it's conveniently located off the front lobby. So we do expect and we know how uh, much in demand meeting space is. So I expect that that space will be used heavily. Okay. Great. Do you know the mechanism for which it will be booked? Will it be booked through community service or straight through the police and fire? Or I believe uh, we haven't talked about that, but yeah. community services does booking for all town and school right. already. Right. So I would expect we would fold it into that program. Okay. And there's some analysis that came <coughs> from the initial building study, and I don't have that data in front of me. But as far as the use of the spaces themselves within the departments, a lot of that space is shared, and um, for. The administrative space now, if you go to the current station, fire over here, police over here. Well, now all those people are in the same spot. They're actually sharing a same common file room, same photocopier. Mm. And then um, the offices, they're the predominantly uh, shared offices. There's multiple workstations and offices, and the offices are sized so that those number of people can comfortably work. Let's not overlook the obvious fact that we've got police and fire combining in one facility. That's somewhat unique. Um, mm -hmm. There are other communities that have combined police and fire. Um, the chiefs have done a great job for decades now of, of living in shared space. And so we often just kind of take that as a given. But uh, I think that that's a real important feature going forward. We've solidified that relationship for 40 years. <laughs> right. So the next slide is a uh, summary of our uh, project expenses, and um, we've, we are tracking this, of course, with a much greater degree of, uh, of detail uh, under these sort of major items. Uh, we do that every month. Uh, one of my functions as the, as the owner's rep is to, to do that. Um, so you can see where we started as our, our budget line items, and then by design and permitting and project development costs and project management, testing and inspections and the quality control, our FF&E items, which also includes not just furnishings, but the IT equipment and AV equipment and all of the functional stuff, the radio <coughs> equipment is in there. Um, we are moving a good deal of the existing radio equipment over from the current station, and we are actually had meetings today to uh, fine-tune the balance of how that uh, very, uh, uh, I say, uh, carefully orchestrated and choreographed move is going to happen so that there's zero uh, public safety risk of not being able to uh, operate effectively come that day we flip the switch, quote-unquote. Um, so all of that stuff is, is in those line items. And then, of course, the uh, the largest item is uh, is the construction item, which is putting up the building itself. So I did have some people ask me if they wanted to see a, a breakdown. I mean, this is obviously the high level. How would they go about seeing, you know, if they had an interest in, you know, what what was the steel cost? You know, I, I'm not saying anyone's going to do it, but how would they go about doing that? I'm sure it's at some point a public document. Every month when we get a pay application from Landry French, it breaks down concrete, steel, uh, Carpentry, roofing, siding, masonry, all of those things come itemized out. And then behind that summary itemization is uh, copies of the subcontractor's bills, basically. So um, I'm not sure, you know, legally whatever that can be disclosed. It also comes with lien waivers um, every month for payments through the last month. So we don't have any issues there. But uh, th this, it's a completely transparent process. Um, such as it would be appropriate within the contract, I think it's readily available. Okay, great. Well, it's accessible. We don't necessarily make it readily available. Uh, if someone asks for it, we can certainly provide it. Uh, right. We don't serve it up in a right. yeah, consistent, put it on convenient the, format. Right, yeah. um, this is very much a work in progress, literally. Yep. Any other questions on this slide? There was in that capital plan that we looked at on Saturday, Tom, there was... Earlier, before this restarted, there was some money spent on design of a. Did, was that reused? That was that money. Was that design brought forward at the time, or? Well, there was an initial. Um, I wouldn't call it design. It was more feasibility kind of okay, planning. Okay, so work. it was like a feasibility. Uh, okay. Councilor Hayes and Councilor St. Clair were part of that early process. Uh, the council did. Uh, 
uh, authorized use of some of the reserve funds to fund some of that early work. Okay. And then we converted into a more conventional uh, design relationship with an architectural firm um, once we uh, completed that initial phase. And one of the latter slides will show you where that reserve account was tapped for that purpose. Okay, great, thanks. Great. Um, we were also asked, you know, of the 500,000 um, <coughs> we started the project with in our contingency, uh, how did that get, uh, how was that spent through the course of the construction? Um, there's, uh, again, I have a whole list of uh, many, all of the individual items, and, I, and I'd be happy to, to, to discuss those um, in any detail, but to kind of categorize them, um, the uh, GMP was signed by Landry French, and the design was not 100% uh, complete yet. Mm -hmm. So when that got to 100% as a part of the process, and some of it included some of why it wasn't 100% was um, you know, late comments we got back from DEP that required us to make some minor amendments and those sort of things. Um, that was one small piece of it. Other of it was just really design coordination issues. Uh, that was a substantial chunk of money. We've talked about winter conditions. Uh, that number of 400,000 was rounding of me from last time. It was uh, 218 from our contingency to get through last winter, and 175 that was within the Landry French contract uh, to get us to about 400. Uh, uh, what, what's important to note is that uh, we had an owner's contingency, but also our builder has a contingency. Mm -hmm. And to the extent that contingency is not spent, <coughs> Uh, that money flows back to us. So it, it, it is truly money out of our pocket. It's <coughs> a different pocket, if you will. Uh, we had some budgeted items that <coughs> were not necessarily uh, uh, allocated initially to contingency. Um, predominantly, this was the communications tower and the, um, um, the uh, cover for the police cruisers. And those were items that we had budgeted that we transferred to Landry French after GMP through a change order. Uh, so that's how that moved within the budget lines. Uh, we have a fairly small amount of town requested uh, changes that have uh, happened um, that as the work came together and you can really you know, start to see it really coming together and thinking about things. These are some very minor changes that we asked to be added to the project. So that is the total against the contingency of the 624 number. Um, and then the last piece are issues. We talked about um, what happened with the design and the exterior insulation and a few other items. Uh, that's a big number, and that's a claim that's been made and is uh, being resolved uh, with the design firm's insurance company, and we have already received a sizable check already towards that, and we have a meeting set up with the attorneys and other folks uh, for next Friday morning to resolve the rest of the items so that we can get that final payment, add it to the till, process the change orders, and get the subs paid, because at this point, the subs are moving forward in good faith and doing the work under Landry French, and... Um, you know, because it's the right thing to do, and uh, we need to get it resolved. But the town can't resolve it till they have the money from the folks who made the mistake. Uh, so, yeah, and we report that here because all the money passes through us. So technically, these are all processed as change orders. So, in response to the question of change orders, it's only appropriate for us to include it. But there's a key difference: it's being paid for by others. We're simply the the financial pass through. So, when you get a change order, how do you know? I mean, this is a you know nitty gritty question. How do you? What basis do you use to approve them? Does everything make make the cut, or is some stuff turned down? Uh, well, I always say no at first. <laughs> <laughs> True statement. But, uh, sounds but, good to me. Um, <laughs> so the important thing with change orders is what's right and fair. Um, as Tom said, Landry French also has a contingency, and there's been several items. I would say their list, you know, is as equally long as ours of things that would say, look, yeah, maybe the drawings didn't clearly tell you exactly what to do here, but you should have reasonably inferred that that would have been part of the scope of the work to deliver a whole building to the town of Scarborough. <laughs> and so that's what you use your contingency for. And there's really been not a lot of protest uh, from them because they know that, that they're a quality construction manager and they've got the town's best interest at heart and they really just want to deliver the project. So uh, it's been equally shared, but there has been some things that have 
you know, come to us and we discuss them every Friday morning. This team of the Chiefs and, and Tom and Angela and, and a few other folks from the building committee and uh, we make these decisions together. Remember the approach we took was a construction manager at risk approach and um, essentially that requires the, the contractor to give us a guaranteed maximum price. Yep. They're doing that before everything's known. Design is still underway. Mm -hmm. In fact, the value of this process is that you've got the contractor, the designers, the owners collaborating as a team through design. And so a lot of good stuff flows from that. Um, so to really guard against or give a, a little bit of a buffer to a guaranteed maximum price, there's an allowance uh, or a contingency, if you will, that the contractor has at their disposal to recognize that there's some unknowns. Um, and it's been a... You know, in spite of some of the hiccups, it's been a very productive process in terms of collaboration to work through issues. Any other questions on how our change orders have been processed? So our next slide is um, just to kind of reset back to how we s first started off on this. And this is simply the language that was on the referendum, question one, that the voters approved. Uh, we thought it was just, just, just to bring it forward so um, you folks could see it and, uh, and understand as we start to look at uh, reserve funds and uh, bond funding, which are on the next couple of slides. Anything here we need to recap? Or are you folks comfortable with sort of how what the approved language is so that we can make those decisions to... This helps inform the next conversation on the next couple of slides. So revenues applied to the project. Uh, this is uh, from uh, reserve accounts. We estimated initially 625, <coughs> it's an earmarked from reserve. Um, actual expenditures to date against the reserve account is 614. So pretty darn close there. Yes, sir. So I know the answer to this, but just for everybody watching at home. Can you explain, the reserve account was set up specifically for this project, correct? I suspect the town of Scarborough has several reserve accounts yep. dedicated yep. for yep. specific yep. projects. And, and this was established back in 2008, is that? Earlier than that, I came in yes. 2008, yeah. early, yeah. mid-2000s. It was with the sale of property uh, down the corner of Commerce Drive yep. and Route 1. So this money has been set aside for this specific project for it has. 10 years. Yep. Fire Council had mm -hmm. foresight that there was a need and they dedicated that. I, yeah. Must have been tempting to use it for other purposes, but I'm pleased that they were able to establish this as a priority. Yep. And it was the initial funding that got the conversation started. Sure. Thank you. That's just... And then the other source of revenue for funding the project, other than the bond, was the uh, sale of the public safety building that's uh, across the road today. Uh, we estimated uh, 1.4 change, and that's just about exactly what we are going to realize uh, with the sale that's um, under agreement and uh, set to close in, in May. In are there any other fees that will need to come out of there? It's, so that's the bottom line that's after net, the realtors and the, net everybody's proceeds. paid? Okay. Right. Sale price is uh, 1525 Okay. And so this is uh, what we expect to receive at, at the closing table. Remarkably, the two differences, uh, you know, there's $367 that separate those two yeah. numbers. So I'm really pleased how close we're tracking them. Those. I just ask that you guys do a little better next time with the estimation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'd hope to get more like over $2 million, we'd which would have, we wouldn't be sitting here had we, yeah, <laughs> we would have gotten yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, but, that's one know, reason the conversation right. was delayed till now. Yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> Uh, so financing history to date against the, the bond, uh, <clears throat> the amount authorized by the voters was $19.5 million. Uh, the bond premium received as a result of the uh, uh, having that money, holding that money, is $860,000 change. Uh, we've drawn down uh, $17.6 million to date of bond proceeds. Um, and doing that math out, the remaining amount available to bond uh, within the amount authorized is uh, one point, almost one point nine million. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, we're requesting uh, five thirty four, uh, and there's an asterisk there because, as I explained the last time before you, um, you know we've got a few months left to go, and uh, we hope that we've got our arms around all of it. But um, you know, there's, there's liable to be things that pop up. We've got a winter to get through, and all that sort of thing. So. 
you know, that's exactly where we feel we are as we sit before you today. Mm -hmm. um, so the remainder, remaining voter approved bonding capacity is uh, 1.3 million. And when you say, you know, the bond proceeds to date, that doesn't mean you've paid all the contractors, all the people there, right? But we're getting bond premiums for anything that's sitting in that fund for right now. That's just what we've tapped into. That's we've done two different bond issues. Those two total that, that amount that we've borrowed so far. And just to clarify, we sorry, we get the bond premium at the at the time we go out to bond. It's not an account, so to speak, right. sitting there. I just want to make sure the bond premium is at the time of transaction. Well, we, that's when we're first aware whether any premium exists. Correct. Right. right. But this isn't is, this isn't money in an account interest. earning interest. It's not interest. Yeah, right. It's not interest. Well, it is interest. Well, at the upfront is, is, is my point. It's in the same project. That's not getting earning bigger. interest. It's a deal. Okay. But there's a decision as to how to apply it. Sure. Yeah. 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 And out of that 17 million, I mean, where would you say we're at right now in terms of what's been paid and what's still outstanding? Oh, it's an overall percent complete. We are within, uh, we just got the invoice today through uh, December, and that'll typically be paid inside of um, um, five to ten days. So um, we've paid out, if, you, if we go back a slide, actually, tell them. Uh, we've paid out in expenses and construction $14.1 million 14. so far, and there's another... I think the invoice that I just got this afternoon is 1.3 or 4 million. So that more to the point, the 15.9, that bottom line number is what we've paid out, and mm -hmm. those are kind of rolling in. Yep. Yeah. Councilor Harris, do you have? Yeah, I, I wish I could say I do know the answer to this one. <laughs> um, Tom, in, in like the dummy 101 version, can you explain what the bond premium is? Is it because at time of issuance of the bonds? People, I, I guess it's because people are willing to pay a premium because they think the interest rate they're getting might be greater than the market. I mean, what, what generates a bond premium? Because I don't, we see it all the time, and I'm, I'm not even sure on the finance yeah. committee what, what creates First time that. I saw it was with the Wentworth pro project, mm -hmm. and that's one of the reasons that we had some challenges is we didn't fully appreciate. Uh, in that case, we had over $3 million yeah. of premium uh, in the end. It was a bigger series of bond issues. Uh, I don't profess to understand all the mechanics behind it, uh, but it's a relatively new phenomenon. We don't ask for it. We don't expect it because of that. Uh, but as I understand it, it's a way for investors to kind of hedge their bets a bit. Um, and I know Councillor Clucci has some further <laughs> information on the matter. I, I, I might be able to try. But, uh, so when you go buy a bond, right, there's a coupon rate. Yeah. Let's say it's 4%. Yeah, right. If you go buy a bond today, coupon of 4%, but you could go get a loan to 3%. It's that the bond it's premiums are equalizing. Is to, to make that 4% equivalent to the 3%, it's worth X, and that's so what the bond worth more. is. Yeah. It's worth more. It's yeah. the difference. Because it's a series of, you're, you're buying a series of payments. Right. That seems to be here to stay. Yeah, Every issue we've had since, you seem to be getting some level of bid premium. It's, it's, it's really impossible to predict. Yeah, it depends on the bond market, obviously. <clears throat> Any more for this slide? No. Nope. Sure. Yeah. Can I just we'll clarify? Sorry. Of course. Uh, so, based on what you know right now, you expect to bond 1.3 million less than the voters approved. Am I interpreting that right? Uh, so that well, if we used uh, surplus reserves to pay for the <coughs> current request, or if we used bond funding, then I would assume. No, if we use bonds to pay for the current request, then. So the, right now you have 1.86 available to bond. This request would be 534, mm -hmm. so that leaves 1.3 million. Yes. That yeah. won't be issued, or we hope won't be issued. Correct. Okay. Wait, you about to use for it? <laughs> I, I don't think we could. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> so technically we're coming in under if nothing changes, but I know not to expect that in new construction. There's always something, but... Hopefully it'll be minor. My ex expectation, even when we reconcile this three months from now, that we will not need to bond the full 1945. Right. Yeah. I don't want to confuse the matter, but I think we're probably close to being short about 300,000. I think we're looking at probably 9.1, 19.1, 19.2. Because we haven't approved. There's a million dollars more in bonding we haven't even approved yet. 
right? Is it, well, I guess I'll I'll leave that alone because that has nineteen five in front of it. So yes, this third yeah. this third bond issue that will happen in right March April will right. include yeah. what we believe the proceed or the monies that we believe we need to finish this project. Right. So I just want to clarify that the nineteen point five we're gonna we've that is all approved. There's just going to be one more action in about six months. That might sound like we're doing this all over oh, again, but right, all yeah. we're doing is issuing the last bit. I just, I'm okay. saying it out loud, so Let's in six months, it doesn't right. seem like we're doing this again. Right. Right. We're just executing the final million. Is Voters give the, the overall uh, bonding authority. Council approves individual bond orders. Right. So you're right. the one that approves each and every right. time. And we're doing it in bits and pieces because why borrow it if we're not going to spend it? So it, as we get closer right. then. Yeah. And there's tight regulations. You can't borrow right. sooner than you need it. You need to demonstrate okay. that yep. you can spend it in a 12 or 18 month period um, you know, yep. based on arbitrage yep. requirements. I just wanted to say that for, to, for clarity. So. And there was a learning you had from Wentworth, right? Where there was was too much bonded at one point, or it was only no, the bond we premiums? No, we didn't properly account for bid premium. Okay. And that was a $40 million project. Uh, in, at the end of the day, it was about 3.2 or $3 million in bid premium. And at the end of the project, we said What's we didn't need this? to borrow as much yeah. as we did. And so, Peter will recall, we went through all sorts of exercises um, uh, to put that money back to use, because there's only a limited number of things. And essentially, it was debt service over a series of years. Because it was more than the annual debt service, as I recall. Yeah, okay. it took two years to use it up. So we learned from that mistake. Now, when you're factoring in the, uh, well, you have to confirm, when you do your final accounting, are you going to uh, take into consideration the interest that you've earned on the bonds issued to date and, and reconcile that or adjust the final issuance for? That was my intention, yes. Okay. The only other option would be to apply to debt service. It's not available for general purpose use. Which, which I believe is the amendment that Peter offered up last week was to <coughs> keep what you just referenced for debt service at this year's budget cycle. I believe that's so I'm clear. I'm pleased to bring the bond issue as repair to the finance yeah. committee. We can have that, that conversation. Because that decision happens in yeah. right. But I'm just because yeah, right. Do, do I understand you correctly? Yes. From yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yeah, right. Yeah. I read your body. I read your body yeah, language sorry. over there. Do that in the budget. It will be essentially we'll be bonding more than we need. So it's 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 a value. Sure. It's a judgment call on as to yeah. how you'd like to apply it. Right. Good on the slide, everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay. So we want to do a. Just go through the reserve uh, transaction history just to um, help bring you up to speed on that as well. Um, so again, at least since 2008, the uh, sale of the property to the uh, main veterans uh, yielded uh, 1.8 uh, nest egg there. Um, we had some rental income from the uh, three buildings that were on Route 1 that we uh, demolished to make room for the new building. <clears throat> and then um, we had some investment interest income from the bond. And then we had an unspent balance on a police station roof repair. So that yields a uh, 1.9 in there. Now we look at the uh, expenditure side of things, uh, some maintenance costs, uh, 14 Saco Street purchase price, uh, 265, 267 yeah. purchase, which are those two houses. Yeah, if I could, Tom, the 14 yep. Saco Street is a residential property next to the North Scarborough Fire Station. It became available. Oh, we yeah. approached, uh, it was really kind of preserving options for the future. That structure still exists and is, uh, is, is leased out. Um, so at the time, the council thought that that was a wise use of these reserve funds to prepare for the future. And the other purposes were uh, the three residential properties next door. And, property uh, that we now are building the public safety building in nine Fairfield which was uh, again a residential property that abutted the existing public safety building that came available where are we leasing out 14 Saco Street yes is the so is that just going into the general fund as far as those lease payments? No, it should be going in here I'm it, not sure why we haven't reported this right because it, it would make sense that it goes back yeah. into here correct okay. it does yep and is the nine Fairfield is that is that Part of the sale, it is. So that got that got packaged up into the 
Yeah, they're two separate lots still. I presume the next buyer will combine the lots, uh, but it really squares it up nicely. Uh, it was uh, a smart purchase on our part. Uh, and you'll see the last uh, expense there, the new PSB architect design, the Councilor Gleistein, that was some oh, of the yeah. initial yes. work to do that preliminary feasibility work and space planning. Those sum up to, yeah. yes, sir. Can you explain the trigon? Uh, I know that we have one here and that we're connected. <laughs> <laughs> recall a particular, um, that order, I can pull it out and it will refresh my memory, but uh, that system was always designed with the, with the public safety building in mind. Right. And so, um, I, again, I don't recall exactly what that order authorized in the, in the investments, but I believe it was all around making sure that system can be tied into um, the existing, or excuse me, the, the building next door for maximum efficiency. Is that going to work? Is because I, I know nothing about it, but all I've heard is that, has that been disappointing to date? Is Knock on wood. There's no wood around. <laughs> That's all I It's been working quite well. It has. Okay. All right. all right. What our designers have told us is that uh, it will work even better when it's at maximum. Because mm. um, it's not a complete. In okay. operations. Yep. Uh, part of the challenge is uh, we can't use all of what it produces right now. Um, so we're told that it's going to operate more efficiently and we expect effectively when it's drawing uh, from both buildings. Yeah. So total expenditures against that account of 1.3 million, which which leads us to our current balance. And is it is it still to be determined, or has it been discussed yet? The, the revenue we expect from the cell tower rentals of where that's. Uh, the chiefs are arm wrestling as to whose budget that appears in. <laughs> uh, it, it will be a. It will be a new discussion for the first time in the FY21 budget. Okay. Well, I think it's possible we might wrap up a little early, so if they want to come arm wrestle now. Yeah, that might be. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will see. I mean, that's... <laughs> One of the things we've talked about, historically, they have kind of shared utility expense. I think the uh, fire side does gas and police does electric or vice versa. Uh, this may be a good opportunity to maybe clean that up and have a separate, project, separate budget, if you will, for the building and its operation. Mm. If that's the case, that revenue will likely be shown there. Uh, so that's a something we're working through right now. And, uh, and do, so, d did you have numbers? And I won't say this correctly, but about the op what it's going to cost to operate the building, you know, versus what it's costing now. Like, what are the? I'm sure you ran all those numbers. <laughs> uh, I didn't personally, but uh, coincidentally, uh, we followed up on that today in our project meeting, and those numbers are due in. Uh, Today or tomorrow, from okay. based from the mechanical engineer, um, that is uh, based on the as-built condition of the system. So that will feed into what they need to budget for for the next fiscal year. Okay. It's it's twice the square footage, so you can expect it will be more expensive. But they are newer, more efficient systems, and so I think there'll be some balancing out. I don't think it's necessarily a doubling. I would be shocked if it is. It should not be. And I think if the, it is, there's a problem that we need to fix. Connection of the trigen is going to help smooth out some of those things as well. So that concludes um, the information we compiled in response to the questions. And if there's anything else, I'd be happy to try to answer. No? Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Thank nice you very job. much. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, before we wrap up, does anybody have any discussion? Anybody want to open up a discussion? We have 20 minutes. Anybody open, want to open up a general discussion of what we just heard? Are there thoughts? I mean, we do have an action item on this tonight, so there's no reason why we can't utilize a few minutes to discuss amongst ourselves. So, Maybe just a, a comment uh, yeah. or, or a thought. I guess I had kind of envisioned having this update towards the end of the project so that we could maybe parlay. Right. Some lessons learned from uh, what we experienced here uh, into future capital projects. And I guess that's just something I'd like us to keep in mind and, and maybe actually do somehow uh, is to try to look back and say, well, what would we have done differently uh, if we had to do it again? Yeah, I'd like to build on that. I think it's a great idea. It probably a, a little, our time's a little bit off because we're not there yet, but especially in view of the big capital projects that we're looking at, the other ones, it would be really and outstanding, I think, for us to understand better how to approach things of this size and scale. 
um, in a session like that. One, one other thing I'd like us to keep in mind is, uh, you know, to the extent that we know we built this building for a couple of decades of, of bandwidth, of utilization, if we do have utilization and there is some way that we could take advantage of that that might help to offset our other, our other space needs, our other building needs, then I would encourage us to be very creative about that. Now, I know there are probably all sorts of regulatory reasons for why we can't or shouldn't do that, but I think we should be, uh, you know, if we have a building that is 50% of, you know, utilization on day one, we ought to think really long and hard about what other space there we can use that might offset a school or, uh, you know, other uses, community center, uh, even overflow needs uh, that the housing allowances alliance is facing. So I, I just ask us to be very creative about that to the extent we could. And, and it's not necessarily to do top for you, you know, or, or really for, for Mike or for, for Robbie, but, but the, the original charge do. given to the uh, ad hoc building committee included uh, a, a, a component that was to make themselves aware of what the other needs are and find ways, uh, kind of the synergies. That's where the IT discussion really came from. Tom, Tom do you, I'm sorry. Okay. No, go ahead. No, no I was just going to ask, do you know if the, is it in the plans to have the common space hooked up with AV that's comparable to this? So, because I know we struggle all the time for meeting space. Yes. Is this going to, this will be a viable option for us to hold meetings that could be streamed or at least recorded and. The infrastructure is there. Yeah. Um, the components to make all this magic happen are yeah. very expensive sure. and it's yeah. outside of what we can yep. put our arms around right now within this budget. Um, but. Uh, it's uh, almost plug and play if those funds do become available. So it's something that we could explore. Well, yeah. The building is uh, fully functioning sure. in and of itself. Uh, connection to our SCTV and all that is, is, is not part of the project. Right. But we can capture video and audio. Um, I just selfishly, I know that sometimes we struggle with several meetings going on at once and there's always a lack of space and we're, we're looking at a second version of this room is what I'm seeing. So. I'm having trouble finding space anywhere, school or town <laughs> facility for that, our... Well, that's my point. Right. Yeah. I did have one final comment. Uh, could you go back a slide? Here, sir. And I, I wasn't going to mention anything, but I see Chief Moulton is here. I was going to say that if that $816 had anything to do with with the prominent part of a, of a welcome visit that... Paul Johnson and I had to his office that showed his drainage system into his waste basket. <laughs> that's, right. that's probably the best use of marketing you know, that I've ever that's seen. Send the new councilors over here, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For the woods. Yeah. <laughs> so, the, so this is going back. I'm just curious if you could speak a little bit to the um, the bidding process, how you ended up with Landry French. I mean, you mentioned a construction manager at risk, um, a max price. So how did that process play out? Um, and again, it was before my time, but this is how it, uh, my understanding how it played out, and, and if I get a little bit of the mm -hmm. details, uh, there was a competitive advertisement for CM at risk uh, for this project, construction manager at risk. Um, received written proposals based on a very specific RFP criteria from a number of firms. And I believe um, the uh, fee structure, which is effectively the, uh, the monetary portion of that, uh, was was also considered and weighed. And from that written response, uh, a short list was developed uh, to bring those firms in. Three, I think, said you interviewed? Maybe four, four I believe. Four uh, to, uh, to interview, and uh, further scoring uh, happened of that proposal, which uh, arrived at the uh, decision to hire uh, Landry French. And it's um, the proposal, I'm sure, and I don't remember the recall seeing the weighting of it, but obviously their fee uh, weighs into that scoring, but it's also about the other qualifications, and it's not just about the, the low bid, although they, they may right. have been. Yeah, low. the RFP had a uh, predetermined matrix for evaluation, and certainly fee mattered, uh, project team mattered, uh, competent or, or similar experience mattered. Uh, we can provide that RFP if you want to see, but it was a extremely thorough process, and we had some highly qualified firms. The final decision was not easy. Yeah. Councilor Harris? Yeah, yeah. And based on that question, just kind of follow up and follow up what Charles Bushy and Campbell said. There, what I thought did work well for the community, it was, it was a well thought out sort of community process that, mm -hmm. that 
I mean, we had a long conversation at that time about mm -hmm. part of the reason they built that room was we knew there was a real interest of the seniors in the meeting spot. So it was designed <coughs> around having access and restrooms and other things. But that whole process, even, even the public participated in sort of that selection process and the RFP process. Mm -hmm. So it was a it was a really well run, and by the time it arrived as a package, there was a lot of buy-in. So it, it, it at least for me, watching some of these projects versus some of the others we're doing, that was it. And Kevin, you were thank you. You were very instrumental in kind of keeping us all sort of, you know, herded together and on track. So that was a great learning for me. I, I thought it was a really good process that we probably should try to use more on. And then the next step that also further transparency is once Landry French was engaged and we, we got to their presentation of the GMP, all of their, when they bought it, bid out to three electricians and five HVAC companies, all of that information was given to us and showed so that they could um, justify for the most part and was based on the, the uh, lowest cost uh, subcontractor proposal. And then in, in uh, one or two rare instances, and the dollar value wasn't really different, um, but based on some past history and that kind of thing, um, uh, we were able to see and verify that uh, indeed we were getting the lowest, uh, best value for the team that ultimately got selected to build the building. We were also interested in their subs. Uh, we encouraged them to look to Scarborough businesses. There was a, there's some very talented mechanical contractors locally. Uh, there's a, a mason. In the end, a number of those things didn't work out, but they had a, a shot at the work. Steel is from? That's right, local. steel is from Nick Brady. So. Very good. Thank you, sir, for your time. I think Thank it's you. much, I know it's much appreciated. I think this helps all of us. So I know last time we saw it, I said, help us help you. And this is, <laughs> I know this is a lot of extra work, but. For us, I know that we appreciate these. This this helps educate us. So I think. Glad to do it. Yep. So thank you very much. Uh, with that, we'll take a. We won't start our regular meeting till seven o'clock. So everybody, just hang tight for about twelve minutes. This one probably would have helped.